know him, you're in for a, a very, yeah. very much yeah. of a blessing. Brother Donnie Farmer from down off of West Virginia, he go come and preach to us. You come on, preach it. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead and open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter number 15. And uh, I want to say what a blessing. I have thoroughly enjoyed being here and being with you folks here at uh, Esther Baptist Church. And uh, we've been spreading the word about the meeting uh, and inviting people to come. And uh, we had a preacher come today all the way from Conover, North Carolina. He's back there. And had one good brother come all the way from the Philippines. Amen. <laughs> it's good to see our, our good brother, Giovanni Mendez, back there from the Philippines. And uh, we did have uh, a report that another good brother in the Philippines was listening and got, to, got the live stream last night. So you don't know who's going to hear. You don't know, know who's out there. But everybody needs to hear the word of God. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And we're saved by grace through faith. So men need to hear the story of Jesus. And I want to I say with the preacher, I'm glad he made a place on the wagon for me. <laughs> Amen. 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 Where would we be without Jesus? Uh, I, have, uh, I have two little great-grandsons. Right now, they're both four years old. In a few months, one's going to turn five. But, uh, but uh, we ask, and sometimes one of them, Jeremy, sings with the girls. When they sing at home, he sings with them. And I said, Jeremy, you going to sing tonight? He said, yep. And I, he's, four, he's four. I said, yep. And I said, Nathaniel, you going to sing too? He said, uh-uh. And I said, you're not going to sing? He said, uh-uh, preach. <laughs> so he didn't want to sing. He, he wants to preach. So who knows? Amen. God told Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. Amen. And there, there may be some more folks that need to answer the call. God chose by the foolishness of preaching to save them that will believe. Amen. So what a joy to be in the Lord's house tonight. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. Now, if you found your place at Exodus 15, stand please. And I want to read just uh, a few verses and bring what might be an unusual message tonight, but I trust it'll be a, a blessing to your heart. I want to begin reading in verse number 22. Verse number 22, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness, and how many of us know what the wilderness is? Oh, it's not like the Canadian wilderness, all those trees and streams and, and fish. <laughs> the wilderness here is the desert. Three days in the desert, nothing but sand and rocks and scorpions and rattlesnakes, amen, in the desert. They went three days in the wilderness and found not a little bit of water, but found no water. No water. Now, how many know that you can't last very long in the desert without some water? And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter, and therefore the name of it was called Mara, which means bitter. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Have you ever wondered why everything's always the preacher's fault? Uh, yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Well, it's nothing new. It's always been that way. So. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he knew what to do. He knew where to go. And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And there he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. You could be seated. 
I, I, want us, I want us to see the situation here tonight. The children of Israel had, uh, had come out of Egypt. They had crossed the Red Sea into the wilderness. They were on their way to the Promised Land. And the first leg of the journey, they go three days into the desert and find no water there. They pass on until they come to a place called Mara, and it's called Mara because the word means bitter. And although they found water there, the water was bitter water. And we're to understand by that that the water was bitter because the water was poisoned. And it was it was not uh, it was not for human fit for human consumption, and I want to say look at the look at the picture here the children of Israel in the wilderness in dire circumstances there is no water for them. In fact, if they don't get some water in a very short time, they're going to perish. But in the story that's given to us tonight, God makes a way for them to be saved. He makes a way for them to be saved because he provides a certain tree. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. And it is by that tree that the people are rescued in the desert. Now, the waters were bitter. And I think about sin. And the way of sin is a bitter way. And it always, when it is finished, it always brings forth death. Amen. When sin is finished. And so it's a picture of men in their sins without God. And unless God provides a way for them to be saved, they're going to perish. I know they think they're going to be all right, but they're not. Not without God, the way that God provided for them. Now, what, how did God provide a way for them to be saved? It says that the Lord showed Moses a tree. Did you see that? A tree. Now, the Lord did not say to Moses, now, I want you to go out and get a pine tree. He did not say to Moses, I want you to go out and pick out an oak tree. He did not say, go and pick some other variety of tree. In fact, God didn't leave it up to Moses which tree to pick. The Lord showed him a tree. One particular tree. God singled out that one particular tree to illustrate, I think, his plan of salvation. And I want to talk to you about that tree tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and for your mercy and for allowing us to be here tonight. And Lord, if it had not been for the tree, and if it had not been for Calvary, and for the one who went there for us, we would be lost and undone, world without end. And I pray, Lord, tonight as we look into the pages of your book, that you would do as the psalmist said, that you would open our eyes, that we may behold wondrous things from thy law. Amen. Amen. And may we be blessed with a sense of what a wonderful book this is and of what a wonderful God we have who loved us so much that he provided for our salvation. And Lord, may we love you and serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God showed him a tree. Now, here's what I want to do tonight. I, want to, I really want to just zero in on one word in verse number 25. One word in verse number 25, and it is the word showed. S-H-E-W-E-D. Now, that's the, that's, the, that's the 1611 spelling, amen? And I like it, amen? But we know that it, it means to show, to, to look at, to point at. In fact, I want to look at the word in two ways. I want to examine the word, first of all, in the Hebrew language, the Hebrew of the Old Testament. And then I want to look at it in the English language. Now, in the Hebrew, the word here translated showed is the word yara. Yara. Amen. Now, now, actually, it sounds a whole lot like our English word arrow and that's where we get our English word arrow from that very Hebrew word yara that's used here in Exodus 15 and verse number 25 the Lord showed him a tree now there basically there, there are three ways to look at that word that word has three meanings first of all it means to it means to uh, to point to use your finger like an arrow and as a pointer 
and, and to point the finger. It's like God said to Moses, that tree. Yeah. That, yeah. that one tree. Yeah. Not, yeah. not some other tree. Amen. Men have come up with all their own ways, but God said, no, no, no. It's that. We'll do it my way. <laughs> it's that one particular tree. Now, what is interesting is you know about how the, how the Old Testament scrolls were all written on, on a skin, on animal skin, but preferably on lamb skin. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Amen. And and this the because of because of the ink as as the ink would go would be put applied to the to the scrolls to the flesh it would actually bond to the flesh, yeah. so that literally as they wrote the scroll, scrolls the word was made flesh. Yeah. And, and it looked forward to day when the word would be made flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But because that the scrolls were so precious and so few in number, they, they weren't allowed to handle them very much, not with their hands. And, and they had to clean, be sure their hands were good and clean because even the, the skin or the perspiration from, from human hands would soil the scrolls. And, and the acid from our skin would eat away at the scrolls. And so what they did was they made little pointers out of silver. And if you've seen them, they're, they're called a yod because a yod means a hand. On the end of the little pointer, just like a stylus that you use maybe with your tablet or whatever, but on the end there's a little hand, just like a human hand, with a finger pointing. And as the rabbis read the scrolls, they used, they used the yod or the stylus, and they, they used that finger to follow the text as they read the text instead of their own finger. Amen. But the whole time they were pointing at the word of yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. And this word yarrow means to point as with the finger. Oh, yeah. And I think about God took his finger and said, it's that tree right there in that book right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the one that we're looking for. That's the one we've been looking forward to from Genesis all the way through to Calvary. Yeah. As your pastor said a moment yeah. ago, there is a crimson thread that runs from, yeah. the, be from the beginning. Amen. Oh, yeah. All the way down to the cross. And so that word yarrow means to point with the finger. And every rabbi that read the scrolls took the yod and with the finger they pointed at the word of God. And they were pointing, they didn't understand it, but at the word made flesh. And they were pointing to that day when he himself would come and go to that tree. That one particular tree. So the word means, first of all, to point at. It means, secondly, to take aim at. Because, after all, you know what you do with an arrow. You put it in a bow. And you aim at a target. You put an arrow in the bow. You pull back the string. And you look through the crosshairs. Amen. Now, I know, I know old-timey old ways. They didn't have all the newfangled stuff. But it's amazing what technology has done. How, how many bowmen do we have? How many hunters do we have? You have, a, you have a crosshair on your bow, and you look down. Hey, you can get it right in the target, and when you look at the target, you know what you see first and foremost? You see the cross. Amen. It means to set the sights on a target. And from the very beginning, God, had his sight set on Calvary. Yeah. And from the very beginning, God looked through the crosshairs of time and zeroed in on the mark. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then uh, the arrow, the, to, this word yarrow, literally does mean an arrow. Uh -huh. It's the arrow that is put in the bow and aimed at the target. And it's like God put the arrow in the bow, looked through the crosshair, and he said, Moses, I'm zeroing in now. It can't be any other tree. Yeah. Just that one tree. That one. Hey, and God's a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. What he aims at, he hits. Yeah, bullseye. I'll show you why. Did you know that word yarrow actually does mean arrow? Now, now get this. Look in Psalm 127. I'll read it if you don't want to turn there. But look in Psalm 127. And we learn a little bit more about what God says about arrows. 
in Psalm 127 and verse number 4, the Lord said, As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. In other words, there's not a whole lot said about arrows in the Bible, but here in this, we get a little, little more light on how God sees arrows. Children are like arrows in the hand of a mighty man. Now, what kind of illustration is that? Children like arrows? Well, I think that's true. I think it's true in this sense. Because, actually, do you know what you do with an arrow to make an arrow? First of all, you have to fashion it straight. If you wanted to hit the target, you want it to fly right, you have to fashion it straight, and you have to make it as sharp as you can. Amen. I think the sharpness of the arrow speaks of secular education. I think we ought to learn all we can. We need to learn as much as we can, but it, because it'll help us understand spiritual things too. And I think making that arrow straight has to do with our religious or our spiritual education. We need to be straight morally. We need to be lined up with the Word of God. And so, Mom and Dad, that is your responsibility to make your children straight and sharp. And then, do you know, the only thing you can do with the arrow after you've done that, the only thing you can do with it is put it in a bow, pull back the string. Man, this is the hard part. Let it go. It's hard to let go of those babies, isn't it? You want to keep them as long as you can, amen. But you've got to let go. You aim them in the right direction and aim a little bit high because they might fall a little along the way like an arrow does. Amen. Fashion them straight. Fashion them sharp. Aim at the target and aim high. And if you do what you're supposed to do, the arrow will strike its mark. Now, children are like arrows. What has that got to do with what I'm talking about? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> Look at that next verse there. It says, happy is a man that hath his quiver full. <laughs> Uh, Evangelist Luke Connor was at our home today, and we had we had children, we had grandchildren, we had great grandchildren running out our ears. And he said, "Preacher, your quiver is full." <laughs> I said, Amen. "Amen." But you know something? God only had one arrow in His quiver. Amen. There was only one begotten Son of God. God only had one arrow. There were other sons, created sons, but there was only one son. One begotten son. He only had one arrow in his quiver. And you know what God did? He took the one arrow in his quiver. He put it in the bow. He pulled back the string. And he set his sight on Calvary. And he aimed high because that arrow had a long way to travel from, from the foundation of the world. But in the fullness of time and right on time, that arrow struck its mark. And that day Jesus went up Calvary's mountain and they put him on that cross. He was impaled there on that cross. God never missed. He hit the target. Let me show you something else about arrows. Deuteronomy 32. Listen to these words. I'll read them to you. Arrows picture children, but arrows also picture the judgment of God. The judgment of God. Listen to what the Lord said when he was angry with Israel. And he was about to bring judgment upon them. He said, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn into the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. And I will heap mischief upon them, and I will spend mine arrows upon them. God said, I do have a quiver full of judgment arrows, and I'm going to unleash them on all the... God haters and Christ rejectors and all of the people that have rejected my love, my mercy, my grace. And hey, get this, God had one arrow in his quiver. He aimed at Calvary, and in the fullness of time it struck its mark. But then you know what God did? He took all of his judgment arrows. The arrows which represented the judgment of a holy God against the sins of mankind. And he aimed all of those judgment arrows at the cross. And God let them go with his fury. 
And as his son hung there, all the arrows struck him there. And I can almost hear the voice of the Lord Jesus in, in these words in Lamentation that says, I am a man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath, and he has bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. Yeah. And God poured out the judgment against yeah. sin yeah. upon his own son yeah. there on Calvary's cross. And did you notice all the wounds that Jesus had on the cross? Just, just like arrows, the thorns pierced his brow. Just like arrows, the nails pierced his hands. Yeah, Just like arrows, the nails went through his feet. Yeah. And even the spear, like an arrow, was run into his side yeah. as he hung there that day and suffered the arrows of the judgment Amen. of God yeah. for Amen. sinners like you and me. Amen. Amen. What a picture we have. God said, Moses, that tree. Uh -huh. yeah. And that is the tree that God had his eye on. Right. Yeah. And when the, from the time that the Lord Jesus left heaven and stepped across the stars yeah. and came down the marble staircase of heaven, he had his eye yeah. on that tree. Yeah. And God said, the people are going to perish yeah. unless I provide that tree. And so God provided the tree. Amen. And so we see in that word in the Hebrew, yarrow. What a picture of what God did for us. Now I want to look at, that's, that's that little word showed. That's the word yarrow. Now I want to look at that word showed in the English language. Let's look at that word. And what I want to do with, with it is I want to do what my, my fifth grade teacher made us do when I was in grade school. You see, she taught, she had the fifth and sixth grade, the split group, and she was also the principal. She had her hands full. And when she had to be out of the room, she gave us busy work. And sometimes she would write a word on the board. She'd put a big word on the board. She'd say, get out a sheet of paper. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at that word on the board, and I want you to see how many little words you can find in that big word. And whoever finds the most will get a prize. And we get real busy hunting for those words. Amen. Yeah. Now, I don't know why this word is that way. All I know is it is that way. And if it is that way, that's, then God made it that way. So I just want to show you what I found in that word, show. So you can say, he showed us. <laughs> what God showed him. I want you to look at that word, show. Look at, in fact, look at the first three letters. What, what is the first three letters? What word is that? She. It's the word she. Now, if you want to jot that down, you can. But it, it's actually the first three letters is two words. Not just one word, it's two words. What are the two words? She and he. Hey, listen, it was the he and the she was the reason we needed the tree. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about Genesis chapter 2 and 3. And God made man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. God opened his side, took out a rib, and made a help meet or worthy of him, brought him to the man, and said, the two shall be one flesh. And those were our original parents. Isn't it interesting? There are not two he's in there. They're just... And no, there's not two she's in there. I thought that was interesting. There's just he and she. And they're joined together as one. Because you find both of them in the same word, don't you? Amen. And God said, Adam, you see those two trees in the midst of the garden? You better not. The other one you can eat, but that one you better leave it alone. And look at, look at this again. I want you to see this. See those three letters, S-H-E? Now, draw a, draw a line between the S and the H-E and separate them over here. Okay? And then you have a S and you have a He. Now, I don't know where He was, but He, he wasn't there. I don't know where He was that day. But when He went away, you know who showed up? The snake, the serpent. 
and because of him they fell into sin. <laughs> and there's that there's that S, amen. While Adam was away, the serpent showed up. And the Bible said that he deceived her. He deceived Eve. And he said, Yea, hath God said, Thou shalt not surely die. God knows your eyes will be open. And you'll be like him. Hey, listen. And so she, of course, uh, took of the fruit. And then when he returned, uh, he, because he took the fruit too. And uh, I, I don't know. that He knew. The Bible said he knew. He, he was not deceived. He ate that fruit with both eyes open. He knew exactly what he was doing. What he did was wrong. What he did can never be made right, can never be justified, but I think there was a reason why he did it. I think the reason why he did it was he knew what she'd done. He knew what was going to happen to her. And he loved her so much. That he'd rather die with her than to live without her. Yeah, amen. amen. Yeah. And I think that's exactly why Jesus laid his life down on Calvary's cross. Yeah. Because he'd rather die with us or die for us yeah. than to live without us. Yeah. Love like this was never known. Jesus died for his own. The he and the she were the reason why we needed the tree. Now, notice this. As soon as they ate the fruit, you know what happened? Their eyes were open. And they saw that they were what? Naked. They said, uh-oh, we have a problem. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still amazed. I get amazed all the time when I read the Bible. The first people that ever lived here, they, they got upset when they saw they were naked. And today, people run around that way all the time. When they saw they were naked, you know what they tried to do? They had a problem. The problem was a sin problem. Yeah. My old daddy used to preach on sin, the word sin, and he used it as an acrostic, standing in nakedness. You've yeah. heard that before, before God. There they were, in sin, standing naked before God. And so they said, we've got to do something. So they came up with their own plan yeah. to help themselves. And that plan's right there in that word showed. Look at it. Take the word showed and drop out the H. Drop out the H. By the way, I'll throw this in as we run by. H in the Hebrew language is the fifth letter of the alphabet. Five is a number of grace. When you take the grace of God out of the picture, this is the only thing you got left. That's a plan that Adam and Eve came up with. They S E W E D leaves together yeah. Amen. to make a covering for their sin. Yeah. They got those leaves, they sewed them all together, they tried to hide what they'd done, sure. you know, and, and did they hide it? Uh, they maybe hid their nakedness from each other, but not yeah. from God. Yeah. And they ran, they ran and hid. And listen, they should have run, yeah. but they shouldn't run away from God. They should have run to God yes. and cried out for mercy. Yes. And if you're here tonight, sinner, and, and you're running, you need to run, but you're running the wrong way. Amen. Amen. You need to turn around and run to Calvary. Amen. So Adam came up with, with his own plan of salvation, and it was that he sowed the, le the fig leaves together to make a covering for his sin. But you know what happens in a little while the leaves? They dry up. They yes. crumble. Isaiah said, we all do fade as a leaf, and our righteousness are, are as filthy rags in the eyes of a holy God. So when God looked down on man trying to make a plan to save himself, God said, wait a minute, I've got a plan to save you. So look at that sowed word, S-E-W-E-D, and drop out the W. You writing it down or look at it? Drop out the W. And what he got left, you got S-E-E-D. God said, no, I got a plan. Yeah, <laughs> and the plan is that one day, the serp, the, the, there will, I will send the one, the seed of the woman, Genesis 3.15. 
the seed or son of a woman without the agency of a man. Yeah. One day I'll send my own son. He'll be virgin born. Yeah. And the serpent may bruise his heel on that cross, but he'll bruise the serpent's head on that cross. Amen. And whether you know it or not, he already knows it. He doesn't want the world to know it, but he has already been dealt a mortal wound. He's dying and on the way out. He knows that he has but a short time. And it won't be long that he'll be cast into the lake of fire Amen. along with all those who have chosen to follow him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But God said, no, I got a plan, and I'm going to send my seed. I'm going to send my own son, yeah. and he will provide a way sure. for man to be saved. But yeah. God knew something that Adam and Eve didn't know. Uh-huh. It was going to be a long time before that arrow hit the target. Yeah. It was going to be a long time. Before God actually would keep his word and send his son. Galatians 4 4 said it was in the fullness of time. But it wasn't time yet. And because it wasn't time yet, you know what God did? Look in that word again, sowed, and find this word. Find the word H E W and the word H E W E D. You see those two words? They're in the word showed. And God said to Moses, one day I want you to hew out two tables of stone. And then it says, and Moses hewed out two tables of stone. And he took it up on the mountain. And Moses backed out of the way because he couldn't write in stone. But God could. And with his own finger, he wrote in the tables of stone his law. His perfect standard which was a reflection of his holy character. And when Moses brought those two tables of stone off the mountain, they were ju- and they were then and have ever since been just like a mirror that you and I can look in and see just how messed up we are and just how much we need that seed who was to come and go to that cross and die for you and me. Amen. The law made sin exceeding sinful. And the Bible said because of that law, every mouth is stopped and the whole world has become guilty before God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Because of what Adam did, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. That's all of no exception. Amen. The only man who ever lived and breathed and walked here who never sinned was a man I talked about last night or the other yeah. night when Pilate said, I find no fault yeah. in yeah. him yeah. at all. Yeah. And that was God's seed. So the law was added because of transgression until the seed would come to whom the promise was made. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now look at that word showed again and find this little word, W E. And that tells us how many of us, how many of us fit in the category, how many of us are sinners, how many of us have sinned. We is that, is that uh, personal pronoun, plural. Am I right, Miss Farmer? She's an English teacher. Is that right, Miss Farmer? Okay. All right. And you know what? It's an all-inclusive word. It means every one of us. Yes. Amen. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. One hundred percent, all of us. Need the tree. All of us are lost in sin. All of us need to be saved. There are no exceptions. Now, in the fullness of time, look at what God did. That law served its purpose until the seed should come. (laughs) I'm about to get happy. To whom the promise was made. And look at this little word right in the middle of showed. Look at it. It's the three middle letters. E-W-E. You know what an E-W-E is, don't you? Yeah. It's a little lamb. Yeah. <laughs> What's the song they sing when he sees me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He sees that lamb. That's right. My son God will provide himself yeah. a lamb. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. 
And Abraham was looking beyond Isaac and Mount Moriah that day. Amen. And he was seeing that tree. <laughs> and what would happen there? When God provided not just a lamb for himself, but when God provided himself as the lamb, they would go to that tree and bear the sins of the world. Amen. There's that little lamb. Now, just the lamb in itself wouldn't save anybody until, look at this word. It's in there. Look at it. In the word showed. Here's the word S-H-E-D. You see it? Something had to happen to that lamb. Its blood had to be shed. Now, I heard, I heard an educated man one time, an intellectual man one time. He was trying to explain the Bible and, and trying to, to I, I don't know what, he was trying to teach a group of people. And he said, uh, really, you know, he said, it really didn't matter how Jesus died. He said, just, you know, a life for a life, just so he died, that was enough. It, it really didn't matter how he died. Uh, he, he could have been smothered. He could have been shot. He could have been hung. You know, it, it just so he died. And I said, that man hadn't been reading the Bible. Because it makes a big difference how Jesus died. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. Even for Adam, God made a blood atonement. He slew the lambs and made the coats for Adam and Eve in the garden. Without the shedding of blood. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb that ran down that tree so that you and I would not perish in the wilderness of sin, but we would have the sweet water of salvation. Amen. Now, here's an interesting word in the word showed. Look at the last two letters on the word. You, you, see, you see the two little letters, E-D? And you say, is that a word? That's a good Bible word. Actually, it's, it's the Hebrew word which means altar. And you'll find the Old Testament, they built an altar and they called it Ed. <laughs> that just means they called it altar because that's what it was. An altar is a place where sacrifices are offered. An altar is a place where blood is shed. An altar is a place where men get right with God. But there's one altar in particular. It's in Joshua chapter 22 and verse number 10. You remember Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh? When they all came up with the other tribes uh, from the wilderness, across the Jordan, into Canaan, into the promised land, they said to Moses, they said, uh, or to Joshua, they said, we're going to go and take the land, uh, and we want to be a part of that. But they said, but, you know, we got a glimpse, we got a glimpse of some other property. We, we, we've seen some real estate just on the other side of the river. You know, just, just as you cross over. And they said, it, it's a really fine looking place. <laughs> and they said, if you'll let us, we'll work real hard. We'll fight real hard. We'll help you take the land and get your inheritance. But will you please let us cross over to the other side? and settle there. Amen. You know, I'm glad this world's not my home. <laughs> I am just a passing through. My treasures are laid up in that land just across the river. And so they kept their word. They helped the other tribes win their inheritance. And Moses said, I'm a jo I keep saying Moses, Joshua. Joshua said, okay, you can go to your inheritance across the river. They crossed the river, and just as they did, they stopped and built an altar. And when the other tribes found out that they built that altar on the other side of the river, they said, why, well, they're going to lead the people away from God. They're going to offer sacrifices to other gods. They're, they're going to forget the God of Israel. And so they actually, they got armed, and they went up there ready to fight. And they said, we're not going to let it happen. They're not going to pull that on us. And they went up there and they crossed the river and there was that altar. And it says, the Bible says it was a great altar. It was a fine altar. It, it, was, it was some fine craftsmanship on that altar. And they called the, the, the leaders down and they said, you better explain what this altar is about. And they said uh, to Joshua and his men, they said, 
They said, no, we're not going this is, to, this is not an altar to turn away to other gods. This is a memorial so that we won't forget our God. And every time we look at that, they, that altar, we're going to remember the altar down in Jerusalem. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Come on. Here, here's what they said. They said, we're not going to offer any sacrifices on this altar. Yeah. There won't be any bloodshed on this altar. Amen. Yeah. This is an altar where no more sacrifice will ever be necessary. Amen. Hey, and when Jesus went across the river. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Ever, ever since Jesus yeah. went to that tree. Yeah. By the way, you know what that ED is? That's what we put on words to signify that they're past tense. Yeah. That's right. And ever since Jesus went to that tree, my sins have been past tense. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In fact, the old man that I was is past tense. The old life is past tense. Amen. Ever since he went to that tree, we have an altar now where no more sacrifices will ever have to be offered. For this man offered one sacrifice for sin forever and sat down on the right hand of God. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that Jesus offered a once and for all sacrifice? The Levitical system is past tense. And our old man is past tense. Amen. And we have a land waiting for us just on the other side of the river. <laughs> hey. Look at this in the word showed. Look at this little word, H-E-E-D. Now that tells us about our responsibility to God now for what he did at that tree. Because of what he did at that tree, wherefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. You know what it says in Hebrews chapter number 2? And then it says, for how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation. Amen. Hey, listen to me. You better take heed to what God's done. You better sit up and pay attention to what happened on that tree. And your preacher said it tonight. There is no other way. God said that one particular tree. There's no other way. Jesus is not a good way to heaven. Jesus is not a better way to heaven. Jesus is not even the best way to heaven. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Amen. The one and only one way. And you better give heed to the gospel and what Jesus did for you on that cross. Now, I, I'm amazed again at this. Look at this. This little word show tells, me, tells us what will happen if men do take heed to the gospel and what will happen if men don't take heed to the gospel. Look at this word, W-E-E-D-S. You see that word? If you don't take heed to the gospel, if you don't listen when God calls, if you don't respond when he knocks on your heart's door, you'll be just like the weeds by the side of the road. You'll be just like the tares of the field that were bound into bundles for the burning. Make no mistake about it. There are, only two, there are only two options, and that is heaven and hell, and there is no middle ground. You can come to Jesus and be saved, and your name can be written in heaven, or you can do it your own way. You can go your own way, and you can reject him, but one day, the fire. The rich man was tormented in the fire, and that's what the Bible says. But notice this, if you will give heed to the gospel, if you will listen to, to the Lord, if you will receive him, look at this word. Now, I like this word. I hope you do. It's a little three-letter word. And, and let me spell it for you. It's right there in showed. It's the word W-E-D. Amen. Hey, listen to me. In this world today, they're fussing and fighting. 
They're killing each other. They're doping up, shooting yeah. up, yeah. drunk as a skunk. Hey, they're, they're into every kind of wickedness. Things we never imagined are going on today in this world. It's bad, and it's getting worse all the time. But in heaven, they're rolling out the red carpet. In heaven, the musicians are tuning up. The choir is getting in practice. And very shortly, the trumpet's going to sound. And you'll hear, thum, thum, ta da Thum, thum, ta da Amen. And the lamb shall take his bride to be ever at his side. Amen. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is leaving this world. And we're going to a wedding in the sky. Let us rejoice and be glad for the marriage of the lamb has come. And his wife hath made herself ready. I'll tell you what. I think the church is just about ready. I think our work is just about done. I think our time is just about up. Just any day now. Ta-da, ta-da. <laughs> Mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, going to wake up and shake off the dust. <laughs> hey, but you talk about it shaking in the graveyard. We're leaving out of here. And we're going home to be with Jesus. Amen. And we're going to be joined to him in that bridegroom-bride relationship while the ages roll. Amen. Look at this little word. It's in the word show. Look at it. It's the word, it's the word D-E-W. You know what D-E-W is? You know what dew is? Fresh, clean, clear water. And you know what they say about the dew? Uh -huh. it, it, it just appears. <laughs> they, they call it the dew fall, but actually they say really the dew just forms. It just appears seemingly out of nowhere. It just appears. And you may or may not know it, but did you know that the vegetation around us depends more on the dew than it does on the rainfall? Amen. You know that dew, fresh, clean, clear water is what those people needed in the wilderness. Yeah. They were dying yeah. without water. Yeah. And just when, when God said, look, at it's that tree, Moses, uh, yeah. right. that one. Yeah. God aimed his arrow at that tree. Yeah. That arrow struck his target. Uh -huh. yeah. And the dew appeared. Yeah. Fresh, clean, sparkling, yeah. sweet water. And we got the dew of heaven <laughs> here tonight. The water of life. Amen. Sweet and precious to our soul. Something interesting about the dew. You know, when it comes, when the sun goes away. Amen. Well, they were over there in Jerusalem that day. And they heard the sound like a rushing mighty wind. They, yeah. they, it was like a storm, and then whew, the dew came. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. The dew comes when the sun goes away. You know how long it's here? Till the sun comes back yeah. again. And for nearly 2,000 years now, the church has been enjoying the fresh, sweet, crystal clear water of heaven the water of life amen and the last invitation of the bible is the spirit and the bride say come let him that is a thirst come and take of the water of life free now the last time i preached this message i stopped right there and when we left they we dismissed we went out to the car my granddaughter said you forgot the last word and I said, what? They said, yeah. I, I said, uh-oh, I did. Look at the last word in the word showed. It's the word W-H-E-E. -E. And you say, what is that? What is that? And I said, oh, yeah, I know what that is. That's whee! 
Yeah. Yeah. How can you not look at all that in the Word of God and not want to shout? And not want to praise Him and glorify His name? Amen. I remember those old timers that get happy and you'd hear somebody uh, holler out, Wee! We don't hear it too much anymore. But I guarantee you when we get the glory. <laughs> Brother May said, I want to be standing at the gate when some of those old uh, soured up Christians come through the gate and just see them shout the first time. Amen. I'm glad that I have the joy, unspeakable and full of glory down in my soul. Now I'm going to close with this. Listen to me. Listen closely to what I'm going to say. What are the odds? What are the odds that one word would contain all of those words? Which one by one in order tell the story of salvation. And they tell the story of Jesus. Let me tell you something about the Bible. Every word is important. And I hear these modernists and these, these revisions and all this. They say, well, we, we put it in our own words so people can understand it. Why would you want it in your own words when you got it in God's word? Can you say it better than he can? And by the way, you know all these people say, well, we don't read the Bible because we can't understand it. I don't believe that at all. I think they don't read the Bible because they can't understand it. And they don't like what it says. Amen. Notice this. S-H-E-W-E-D. That's archaic language. That's the language of the 1600s. The new versions don't spell it that way. And when you change the spelling, you lose all that. Yeah. Yeah. And not even that. Yeah. I think God put every book, word in his book just yeah. like he wanted. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, in yeah. fact, I'll tell you, when God saw our language forming, God watched over our words. Yeah. That they were spelled the way they were because he knew one day he was going to put them in his word. Yeah. And we can get in this book and search for them as for hidden treasure. This is not just an ordinary book. It's God's book. And it's a treasure trove. And it will do you well to love it. Hug it and kiss it. Amen. Learn it. Love it. And do your best to live it. Until one day we see him face to face the people were in the wilderness they had no water and they were dying but God said Moses right there that's how the people can be saved and I promise you when that tree touched that water and those waters were made sweet there was a mad rush to the water hole. Yeah. Yeah. God's provided his sweet waters of salvation for us. Why does everybody want to run the other way? You better come. You better come. Come while you can. All right, what a blessing to find all that in one word. Amen. Thank you, preacher. Thank you for helping us out. Did you enjoy that? The purpose of giving you the word of God is to show you that God is real. Jesus said, or John said in his book, these things are written. Just for one purpose, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. And by believing, you have life through his name. I was reading a book today 
that said if you took a typewriter and started today, it would take you 160 million years to type out the information that's in one strand of DNA. Now how could that evolve? All of that information in one little strand. I'd never noticed all that information, that one little word, had you? But God's got all of that together. And the, the sole purpose of having that is that you might have something to believe, that you could put your faith and your trust in. He said, prove it. Didn't he say that? Prove all things. It's not something that's blind. It's something that if you just open your eyes, he proves it over and over by the wonderful words, the way they're arranged, the way they're written in this book, that you might believe them and you might be saved. I wonder if you just bow your heads for just a moment. I wonder just, would you do this for me? Would you witness for me by the uplift of your hand? Would you say by that uplifted hand, preacher, I believe it. And by believing, I have life through his name. Hold your hand real high where I can see them. Amen. Hold.